Next car 19, currently one of the world's least expensive car T cell therapies, was developed through a collab between IIT Bombay and Tata Memorial. It's now available for commercial use. What are CAR T cells? How are these cells made? When should this therapy be used? What risks come with CAR T cell therapy? Keep watching for answers to all these questions. Patients often ask if they can boost their immune system to fight cancer. The simple answer is no. To understand why, let's look at how the immune system works. It's basically built to tell the difference between what's part of us and what's not. Let's take a virus for example. If we catch one, our body knows it's not supposed to be there. So our first line of defense, the innate immune system kicks in. Then the adaptive immunity takes over for a more targeted attack. If everything's working right, we can get rid of the virus. The cool thing about our immune system is that it remembers, it has memory. If we run into the same virus again, we'll be ready for it. Now let's talk about cancer. Cancer is really good at hiding from the immune system. Our immune system needs to find a threat to get rid of it. But cancer can make itself look like a normal cell, so it's hard to find. Because of this, cancer can grow and even spread without being noticed until it's very advanced. So before we get into more details about CAR T-cell therapies, let's try and understand the role of T-cells. T-cells act like the body's security guards. They walk around the body, checking every cell they meet. If they find a cell that shouldn't be there, like one with a virus, they get to work. They tell other immune system cells and keep checking, just like a dog at a security checkpoint, going from one suitcase to another, calling for backup when necessary. But keep in mind that normal T cells can often miss cancer cells because these cells can hide or look like regular cells. So can we biohack the immune system to combat cancer? This is where CAR T cell therapy comes in. In the Iliad, the Greek poet Omer describes a fearsome beast known as a chimera set to inhabit Asia Minor. This ferocious creature had a lion's head a goat's body and a serpent's tail and was said to breathe fire. This mythical chimera remains a legend. However, scientists today are creating their own chimeras combining parts from different types of cells, including components from the B and T cells of the immune system to form what we now recognize as CAR T cells. CAR T cell stands for Chimeric Antigen Receptor T cell. How are these T cells trained to recognize cancer cells? In other words, how are these CAR T-cells manufactured in the lab? The first step of the process is T-cell collection. T-cells are extracted from the patient's blood. This process is called leukopheresis. It's similar to blood donation. The product is shipped to the lab where it undergoes the next step of T-cell modification made possible through a process called transduction. Transduction in the context of creating CAR T-cells is like installing a new software program on a computer. The T cells are the computer and the new software program is the gene that makes the chimeric antigen receptor. Now to install this new software, you need an installer. In this case, the installer is a modified inactivated virus such as a lentivirus or a gamma retrovirus vector. This vector, like an installer, carries the new software and installs it into the T cells. Once the software is installed, the T-cells now have new capabilities. They can recognize and bind to a specific protein on cancer cells, turning them into CAR T-cells. Just like how a computer can perform new tasks after a new software installation, the T-cells can perform a new task, identifying and attacking cancer cells after the installation of the CAR gene. The next step, the expansion phase of the CAR T-cell manufacturing is like planting a seed in a garden. Once the T-cells have been genetically modified to include the CAR, they are placed in an environment where they can grow and multiply. Over time, these initial T-cells divide and reproduce, creating a large number of CAR T-cells, just like a single seed growing into a flourishing plant. One big issue is keeping patients stable until the CAR T-cells ready for infusion are available. We manage this with something called bridging therapy. 
But if we've already tried most treatments, controlling the disease can be tough even for a short time. Luckily, making CAR T cells in India takes about three weeks and are shipped back to the hospital once ready. Next, the patient undergoes a type of lymphodepleting chemotherapy for three days to reduce the number of immune cells, creating space for the CAR T cells to be infused. Then, these CAR T cells are put back into the patient's blood. Inside the body, the CAR T cells look for and kill cancer cells. After the infusion, patients are closely monitored for side effects. This brings us to our next question. What are the potential risks and challenges of CAR T cell therapy? CAR T cell therapy is not without its challenges. The FDA has given its strongest warning known as a black box warning about the risk of new cancers from CAR T cell therapy. These new cancers can appear months or even years after treatment. Although this is rare and a known risk, just like with chemotherapy, it's still important that patients are carefully watched and told about this possibility. CAR T cell therapy can also cause a strong reaction from the immune system called cytokine release syndrome. This can lead to symptoms such as high fever, flu-like feelings and a low blood pressure. In serious cases, it can cause organs to stop working. There's also a chance of effects on the brain like feeling confused, having seizures or even falling into a coma. These complications are effectively treated with steroids and a drug called tocilizumab. Next, several things could possibly go wrong when making the CAR T cells. Problems with collecting enough T cells from the patient. Keeping track of two things, the absolute lymphocyte count and the CD3 count is very important when making CAR T cells. If these counts are high, we can get more T cells, which makes the therapy work better. If they are low, the therapy might not work as well. The CD3 count tells us how many T cells we can turn into CAR T cells. So watching these counts closely helps make CAR T cell therapy successful. 2. Issues with the genetic engineering process The process of modifying the T cells to express the CAR is complex and there is potential for errors to occur. 3. Failure of the CAR T cells to proliferate Once the T cells have been modified, they need to multiply in the lab before being reintroduced to the patient. If they do not multiply successfully, there will not be enough CAR T cells for the therapy and we might have to repeat the procedure all over again. 4. Contamination during a manufacturing process As with any biological manufacturing process, there is a risk of contamination which could render the CAR T cells unusable. However, companies that manufacture these CAR T cells follow strict protocols, conduct quality checks at every step of the process and provide certificates for certain important parameters. Finally, the high price of making CAR T cells for each person is a big problem. The approximate cost is 50 lakhs. It means many patients unfortunately can't get this treatment. So are CAR T cells the only way to use the immune system, specifically the T cells to fight cancer? No, they aren't. Even though CAR T cell therapies are a big step forward in cancer treatment, there are other kinds of therapies too. These include non-specific immune stimulation, adoptive cell transfer, immune checkpoint inhibitors and vaccination strategies. I'll talk about these in another video. Another point of confusion among patients receiving CAR T cells is deciding which one to choose. Not all CAR T cell therapies are the same. They can vary depending on the specific protein they aim to recognize on cancer cells, the method used to attach the receptor to the T cells, and the type of cell that is used. For instance, imagine CAR T cell therapies as different types of keys. Each key is designed to open a specific lock, some keys might be designed to open lock A, while others might be designed to open lock B. Just as you can't open lock A with a key designed for lock B, a CAR T cell therapy designed to recognize protein A won't be effective against cancer cells that express protein B. For instance, Nexcar 19, one of the CAR T cell therapies approved in India, targets CD19. It is used for the treatment of relapsed refractory B-cell lymphomas and 
acute lymphoblastic leukemia or ALL. The Indian version of CAR T cell therapy for multiple myeloma is in the pipeline. A lot of work is ongoing to use CAR T cell therapies for solid tumors such as the stomach, GE junction cancers and neuroblastoma amongst others. Furthermore, the way that the key is made can also affect its effectiveness. Two keys designed to open the same lock can be cut slightly differently, making one more effective at opening the lock than the other. Similarly, slight differences in how the receptor is attached to the T-cells can affect how well the CAR T-cell therapy works. Lastly, the type of cell that is used to make CAR T-cell therapy can also make a big difference. Using our key analogy, this could be thought of as the material the key is made from. Just as a key made from a stronger metal might be more durable and effective, a CAR T-cell therapy made from a particularly robust type of T-cell might be more effective at fighting cancer. Do you need more treatment after CAR T-cell therapy? Is there any way to know if the CAR T-cell therapy is still working? CAR T-cell therapy fights against cancer by targeting certain proteins on the B-cells like CD19. This therapy can kill both cancerous and normal B-cells, which might cause a condition called hypogamma globulinemia. It's possible to live even if all the B-cells are wiped out by this therapy, but B-cells are crucial for our immune system because they make antibodies to fight infections. Without them, you might be more prone to infections. To prevent this, we may provide you with preventive antibiotics or a treatment called IVIG if the IgG levels are below a certain threshold. So if B cells are missing, it shows that the CAR T cell therapies are still working in the body. We can check this better using a method called real-time quantitative PCR or qPCR. This method helps find and count CAR T cells giving an exact number of cells in a patient's blood sample. It gives useful details about how long CAR T cell therapies continue to work after being introduced in, into the body and helps in checking if the CAR T cell therapy is working well. So my final thoughts on CAR T cell therapies. We have long been striving to find cures for cancer, seeking either a singular solution or a combination of drugs with varying mechanisms of action. Typically, new investigational drugs are approved for use in relapsed refractory settings, which means they are used after several other treatment options have failed. If an approved drug demonstrates reasonable response rates and extends survival, it is then tested in earlier stages of treatment and ultimately compared to the frontline standard of care. As a disease progresses and a patient undergoes multiple treatments, achieving responses becomes more challenging. The return or progression of the disease within a short time frame signifies its aggressiveness. Therefore, the quest is always for a treatment option that works even when the disease is aggressive and has a lower chance of response. CAR T cell therapies have been positioned as one such treatment option. For example, the Indian version of CAR T cells have shown response rates of approximately 70% for patients with relapsed refractory ALL. However, it's crucial to understand that for a treatment to be justified, the response should be durable and long-lasting. It's not beneficial to take a drug that costs millions only to have the disease return within a few weeks or months. So far, the results have been encouraging and compare favorably with CAR T cell therapies produced worldwide. However, the jury is still out on this one. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more such content.